Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, first of all, thank you that we are born of you, that you are our Father. And we thank you, Father, that you feed us with the best bread. Thank you, Father, that you feed us today with our daily bread. And I believe right now in Jesus' name that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth, that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life, and that I speak as the oracles of the living God. And Father, I thank you that every person has a listening ear and a receptive heart in Jesus' name. And now let's confess by faith the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. He is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh right now in Jesus' name. And he said, I will work and no man can turn it back. So he is working right now, turning people from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God, that they might receive forgiveness and inheritance. Praise God. And now let's confess by faith our reception of the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I believe I receive that you open my ears to hear as the learned. I thank you, Father, that I desire the sincere milk of the word that I may grow thereby. I thank you, Father, that you give me ears that hear, eyes that see, and a heart that understands. And that, Father, the eyes of my understanding are enlightened right now that I may know what is the hope of your calling. And Father, I thank you that this word you write on the tablets of my mind and my heart, and it is with me forever in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God for Jesus. Praise God for the Holy Spirit who is guiding us into all truth. And the Holy Spirit now is teaching us faith. Jesus said... In that day, he said, I'll pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter. In other words, the Holy Spirit is Jesus in our life. He is taking the place of Jesus, but they are one. So the Holy Spirit is saying to us the things that Jesus is telling him to say. And he is teaching us faith. He is feeding us the word of God concerning faith. What's that going to do? It's going to give us faith. Praise God. So listen, faith only comes one way, and that's by hearing the word of God. You don't get faith by praying for it. You get faith only by hearing the word. So I am so thankful that he is feeding us now the Word of God concerning faith. Why is it so important for us to learn faith? Why is faith so valuable to us? Why is it um, absolutely necessary that you and I learn faith, learn why we need it, which is what we're doing now, learn what it is, learn how to get it, and learn how to operate faith. And that's what the Holy Spirit is teaching us. So the first reason why it is so important that we know faith is because Hebrews eleven six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder 
to them that diligently seek him. Notice the word diligent, not somebody that casually seeks him, somebody that diligently goes to him and constantly uh, relies on him. So I say by faith that you diligently seek the Lord and that you believe that he is and that he is a rewarder because you diligently seek him. Again, I'm going to share that the words faith and belief are synonymous. Faith is the noun. Belief is the verb. But when you see belief, then no, it's the same thing as have faith in. So the second reason why it is imperative for us to know faith and to know how it operates is because God gave us this faith to live by. This is the way we navigate in this new kingdom. And so a person that doesn't know and understand faith, even though they may be born again, they're living like the rest of the world. We don't have to do that. God gave us his very own faith so that we could live on the level that he lives on. The word tells us in, he, in Habakkuk 2.4, he says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up, that means pride, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And then the next reason is that... Um, It is the parent force of the universe. Faith, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. They were made of something. They were made of the substance of the word of God. When God spoke and believed that those things that he spoke would come to pass, that's what they were made of. So it is the parent force of the universe. And the word tells us to be imitators of God as dear children. Then the next reason is because the only way salvation comes to any person is by faith. The word tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace by the gift, by God's unmerited favor, you are saved, healed, delivered, made whole through faith, through faith, only through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And you know, he tells us exactly how, and this is the same way for every person. So, if someone is listening to this and you're of a religion that is just a religion and they have not taught you that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that if you believe on him and confess him as Lord, you will be saved, then the truth is, is you will go to hell and you will not go to heaven. Because there's only one God, one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. And the only way to receive your salvation is by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So don't be deceived. And I like to ask this. Do you... Can you point to a moment in time that you received and made Jesus the Lord of your life and at that moment you were born again from death unto life? Now, we're not talking about being baptized as a baby or being baptized or confirmed into a denomination when you were 12. We're not talking about that because baptism should follow the um, confession of Jesus as Lord. 
So if you can pinpoint that moment in time, and it's not several moments, it's one moment in time, where you received Jesus as your Lord, and you were actually born again at that moment, then you're saved. If not, then you simply go to the Father in Jesus' name and say, Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord. I confess him as my Lord in Jesus' name. And then, and do it from the heart, and then you will be born again. And hey, not only will you, uh, your future home be heaven, but you live heaven on earth in the blessings of the Lord. Then righteousness, your gift of righteousness comes by faith. He says in Romans 3.22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. Did you see how the word faith and believe are both in that same scripture? Unto all and upon all them that believe. So if you've been born again and haven't received the gift of righteousness, then tell the Lord, Father, I receive my gift of righteousness in Jesus' name. I have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The next one, and we talked about this yesterday, is in Hebrews 6, 12, that you be not slothful, lazy, but followers of them who through faith and steadfastness inherited the promises. And we... The Holy Spirit showed us yesterday the scriptures where we have been made heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, where scriptures where we are born of God, we are now sons of God, and that we have received the inheritance. In Colossians 1, he told us that we have been qualified to receive the inheritance. So, God has left us, Jesus left us, a vast storehouse of inheritance. It's all ours now. All of the promises of God in him are yes, and in him so be it. So he's already said yes to all of the promises. But how many of you have received any of the promises of God? Well, the only way to receive them is through faith. And so again, that's why it's so important that we learn how to get faith, how to operate our faith, so that we can receive the promises that God has given to us that are a part of our salvation. That is, that is what belongs to us already. And I shared with you how um, at my mother's reading of the will, you know, we were all there to hear what had been given to us, but then we had to go possess what was given to us. And we didn't waste any time about it. So I encourage you, allow the Holy Spirit to show you what's been given to you because the Word says that the Holy Spirit was given to us one of the reasons he was given to us was to show us freely what had been given to us freely. So he is um, the kind of like the assistant that God has given to show you what has been freely given to you. But then once you know, you still have to possess that promise by faith. So the next one and this is number seven, is that faith is the only way, say this, faith is the only way to have prayers answered. So listen to this in the word. In Mark eleven twenty four, and this is the prayer of faith. Jesus himself said this, and he, he had said, I only say those things I hear my father say. 
So this is the Father speaking to you right now. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Notice it's not based on what God decides to give you because he's already decided to give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's already been given to you. But it's up to each individual child of God to receive the promises for himself, to pray and get your prayers answered for yourself. You don't have to go to somebody else. You don't have to go to another minister. And you certainly don't pray to a saint. And you certainly don't pray to Mary. That is not going to get your prayers answered. There is only one way for you to get your prayers answered. And that is what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. And then you shall have them. In Matthew 21, 22, he says, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, listen to this, believing you shall receive. I'm going to read that again. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive receive so it's the only the things that you believe you receive that you're going to have crying and begging god will not get your prayers answered if that was the way to do it he would have said what things soever you desire when you pray cry and beg and cry and beg and you'll get your prayers answered he didn't say that so crying and begging is not going to get your prayers answered. We are not beggars in the kingdom. He is our father. We are his children. And I don't know how your parents were on the earth, but God is the original father. And so we should pattern our thoughts after him. What did he say? He just said, come ask and believe. You receive them and you shall have them. So, I'm sure many of us have wasted a lot of time praying effortlessly and just because we didn't do it right. Faith is the only way to receive your prayers answered. And God expects for us to come to him and ask. He even said in John 15, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you shall ask what you will, and it, what's the it? It is what you ask for, shall be done unto you. Then he said, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much prayer fruit. He's talking about prayer fruit there. He said, you bear much fruit, but he's talking about prayer fruit. It is the will of the Father for you to come and ask, but ask in faith. Like he says in James chapter 1, he said, um, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering now listen to this for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea that is driven with the wind that is tossed to and fro he says let not him think that he shall receive anything from the lord so he starts out saying if you lack faith to i mean act like wisdom to ask for wisdom but then he ends up in that passage and this was the Holy Spirit speaking through James. If you let, he said, let not him think that he shall receive anything from the Lord. 
So the only way to receive anything from the Lord is through faith, unwavering faith, believing, not wishing, not hoping, not imagining. You know, I know that after you've prayed, then imagination can be a tool, but he doesn't say imagine that you receive them. He says, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Ask in faith, nothing wavering. And then another scripture in James chapter 5, verse 15, he says, Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. Not crying, not begging. What? The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, I love this, they shall be forgiven him. In other words, he didn't have to confess his sins before he got healed. I didn't intend on going there. But God is so merciful and so yearning to bless and heal people and do them good. Remember how the Lord gave us that word on his goodness that he says that he will heal them. And if they have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So this is what the Lord showed me years ago. He just put this in my heart because I would hear preachers uh, not, well, preachers say in denominational churches, I had heard them in the past, and they would say, but if you're smoking, then you've got to quit smoking before you get healed. That is not true. The good news is, is that he will heal you, or maybe somebody has uh, drank and, and destroyed their liver. Hey, that will not keep you from getting healed. Because he just said it was the prayer of faith that saved the sick. And then he said, and if they have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. So this is what the Lord spoke to me. That a person, whether, say, whether they've destroyed their lungs with tobacco or whether they've destroyed their liver with uh, alcohol, he will heal them because that's who he is. He is the healer. The healer is in the house. The healer is here. And not only that, but he will deliver them from their addiction. He will deliver them from tobacco. He will deliver them from alcohol so they can be free. Jesus came to make the captives free. And so many times Satan condemns a person and says, well, you can't get healed because this scripture right here gives you the reason why you can get healed and not only healed, but delivered and set free. So that was a little side trip, but thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us that. And going back to the truth that the reason, another reason you need to learn faith, learn how to operate in it, is because it is the only way to get your prayers answered. Renew your mind to that. Don't keep praying and not getting your prayers answered. We're learning. The Holy Spirit is teaching us how to get your every prayer answered. And it doesn't matter if you pray a thousand things in a day. God will answer those thousand things that day that is the will of God for you. But how are we going to do it? By believing. I'm going to read you this scripture again in um, Matthew chapter 21, 22. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Praise God. This is a good word. Father, we just thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, that this word just 
goes into every mind as the sword that cuts out all of the wrong thoughts about prayer. But Father, we believe that as your children, that we learn how to accurately use our faith so that we can pray and get it and pray and get it and pray and get it immediately in Jesus name. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God that this word is teaching us, instructing us and growing up in us richly in Jesus name.